As we get closer to the storm area, the first signs of the hurricane appear. See those fluffy cumulus and the sea swells? Won't be long now. And after a while, the rain squalls start showing up. Now, the outline of the hurricane can be seen on the radar scope. Of course, the eye is still over 100 miles away, but already the winds are getting pretty rough. Nobody needs a sign to say, fasten your seat belts on this flight. Four and one half hours after takeoff time, the big 30-ton Neptune has penetrated the storm and is now just 12 miles from the eye. This is the worst part of the storm area. Waves reach mountainous proportions, and winds lash the aircraft with blasts up to 150 miles per hour. Now it's a fight for survival. Every last bit of the pilot's energy is concentrated on keeping the plane low enough to see the water, but high enough to stay out of it. Suddenly, like the end of a nightmare, the plane breaks into the eye of the storm. Now, for a while at least, the struggle is over, and like a fighter between rounds, the crew relaxes. But before the return trip begins, there is much work to be done. The aerologist collects and analyzes his notes on the sea and wind conditions, the exact location of the storm center, and other facts on which the hurricane warnings will be based. Here in the eye of the storm, the seas are choppy and confused. The winds are comparatively calm, but the air is hot and humid. Now, the present position of the storm is pinpointed and all its characteristics noted. Meanwhile, at Jacksonville, a second aircraft must be ready to relieve Crew 1, which has now cleared the storm area and is heading homeward. As long as the hurricane lasts, endangering life and property, the flights will continue. 